This year, the mini fridge industry is turning up the heat with the introduction of many cool new features that are normally only found on high-end home appliances. And so far, this EcoFlow Glacier has tipped the scales by adding an ice maker, making this refrigerator a perfect outdoor companion. It's the right size for family camping trips and includes wheels to easily get from the parking lot to the picnic table. And today we're heading out to one of my favorite local campgrounds to see how it does when paired up with the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. And I'll also hook up the matching solar panel to keep the power topped off while we have some of this gorgeous sunshine. When I plug the fridge back in, its internal battery will immediately start topping back off. I have had the Glacier paired with the EcoFlow River 2 Pro in my minivan camper for about five days now. And we've had a little bit of overcast conditions, so I am starting to lose a little bit of power. But the internal battery inside the Glacier is topped off at 100%, while this thing will top off by the end of the day. I am running the Glacier off of the DC outlet from the EcoFlow. That way I can get the most efficient conversion of energy from the River 2 Pro into the glacier. So right now I have my 180 watt solar panel on my roof plugged into the River 2 Pro. And when I get to the campground, I'll use EcoFlow's 220 watt foldable solar panel to power the mini fridge directly. That way I can use my rooftop panel to keep the River 2 Pro topped off. And then I can use the foldable panel to keep the refrigerator topped off. And hopefully like that, I'll never run out of power. I already have cold drinks in the fridge, but I wanna head over to the grocery store and get some stuff to cook for dinner tonight. So I wouldn't normally take my full fridge out of my van just to show you guys, but I figured that since today's video is about this fridge, I'll pull it out so we can get a really good look at it from the outside. I mentioned before there's an ice maker. It's inside of here and it'll make ice in under about 20 minutes. I have it empty right now, so I'll add a little bit of water and get this thing started while we're talking. So right now I'm running off just the battery inside of the mini fridge. So the ice maker doesn't work without my external battery. So in a few minutes, I'll pull the EcoFlow out just to hook that up. It's a little later in the afternoon, but I have this solar panel and they claim it'll run off of it. So I'm gonna hook this solar panel up before before the sun goes down and see if it'll make ice with just the solar panel hooked up. And this solar panel has an XT60 adapter on it along with the fridge so they match up perfectly. The fridge knows that I'm charging with a solar panel, so it doesn't show here that it's charging. And I think because it's a little bit overcast and I'm behind some trees over here, I'm not getting enough power to fool the ice maker into working. But I haven't tried it yet, so let me try it real quick. So that ding is telling me that there's no water in the system. Let me get some water in there. So the way this ice maker works, there's some metal rods in here. And when they get cold, the ice cubes will form on the rods. Once they're done forming, the rods will heat up just enough so those ice cubes can slide off when you pull the tray out. Let me get the River 2 Pro hooked up so I can get some ice made out of this refrigerator. I'm kind of surprised, but I think this cable is actually long enough to reach. The cable is long enough to reach all the way from under my bed just perfectly over to here so it's a little tighter than i want it but it is perfect i think that's another cable that i had i'm not sure if that's the cable that came with the refrigerator so right now i have the solar panel hooked up on my roof into the ecoflow river 2 pro and then i have this long cable running over to the refrigerator so i couldn't have asked for a better setup the solar panel on the roof is getting some better sun than the solar panel over here in the shade is getting so i just hit the button that releases the ice from those rods I'm gonna wait for that to complete and then I'm gonna hit this second button over here and see if I can get some ice made. How long will it take? 
This water is probably at about ambient temperature, which is between 75 and 80 degrees right now. It's not letting me make ice, so I pulled out the app to see what it's saying. It's saying I don't have any water in the device, so I'm gonna top off the water to the max, see if that'll trigger the water level to allow me to get this ice going. So there's an option for large cubes and small cubes. I'm gonna make cubes, so I might as well make them large. Hit start from the app. You can also hit from the button. And it says it'll take 18 minutes to make those ice cubes. So I'm at 456 and we'll see 18 minutes will the ice be made so about 5 14 i believe it should be done as i would have expected when the ice maker kicked on some fan kicked on inside of the mini fridge which it just lowered its volume but it's still on there blowing it's not a nuisance or anything because i'm using that function and that's about as loud as this fridge gets Something I really like about the top of this fridge is this kind of knurling on the top so that if you set something on it, it gives it some friction points to keep whatever's on there from sliding around. It has a really like deep feel to it. So that's very interesting. Inside of the fridge, I currently have it set up with a freezer side and a refrigerator side. In the refrigerator side, I did pick up a little steak for dinner tonight. I picked up all kinds of vegetables and let's just see what I have in here. I've got my favorite water bottles. I like those, they got suds in them, but they don't have any sugar or alcohol in them. So I do like that. I've got that steak. I've got some mushrooms, an onion, a tomato, aroma tomato not necessarily flavorful but it's still fun and then if i need something to snack on i got some pre-boiled eggs i'll just keep those in there and whenever i need them pull them out and use them inside of the refrigerator portion there is a basket i don't necessarily need this basket but it is helpful for pulling everything out at once and then also if i really wanted to i could separate the freezer side which interesting when i pulled that out it changed over to one sided mode. So I, before I pulled this out, I had the refrigerator side and the freezer side. Pulling this out, put it strictly in one chamber mode. And if you wanna do that, there's some little ridges. I don't know if you guys can see those in the camera. You can just snap this thing right in here. I haven't done it yet because I don't use it, but that's so easy. Snap that in there, that's out of the way. I'm in just fridge mode. But this thing uses so little power that I'm gonna go ahead and keep freezer mode active. But I probably should have pulled everything out before I pulled that center compartment divider out. Since I have everything out anyway, there is a little drain plug right here. You just pull that out. If you have any liquids you need to get out of there. This is not designed to have like standing water in it. I can see some, some, some things in the divider here that I wouldn't wanna have standing water in there. But if you had some, maybe a little bit of ice or the condensation as it melts, you can just drain it right out of there. Now I'm gonna get this divider back in here. Get this desiccant gel out of here. Boom, but as soon as I drop this back in, it went right back in the dual mode. So that's a super easy way to manage that. More mushrooms, frozen spinach, frozen zucchini, onion and pepper blend, some shrimp if I want it, and everybody's favorite, Brussels sprouts. I really like the feature that'll be either a dual chamber or a single chamber based on that pad in the middle. And because that divider can hook up to this lid, I'm not worried that I'll eventually lose it and forget where it's at. I wonder if it'll also serve as a cutting board, but I'm not convinced and I definitely wouldn't try it until I at least check to see if it's the right kind of material. I meant to bring a nice glass cup so you could see that ice when I pull it out of the ice maker, but luckily I'm not as much of a Neanderthal as I used to be. So I at least have a tin cup that I can put some ice in and then pour some water in to maintain a nice cold drink. We've got seven minutes left on the ice maker. How's it look inside? So it is interesting that 
the ice maker is essentially the same as what you would get in a house refrigerator. But the difference is instead of this tray hanging upside down or something and pushing the ice off, it's facing upwards and the ice cubes, I don't know if you can see in the video here, the ice cubes are literally forming on those metal rods in there. In fact, the middle one has like almost no ice in it and the external ones have a little bit more ice on them. So we'll give it its last seven minutes and see what comes out of the ice maker. I'm gonna have a sip of water while I wait for that to finish. Then I'll be able to tell if the ice actually makes the drink taste any colder. I'm here patiently waiting for the ice maker to make ice. And after I closed the lid, it went from five minutes to 10 minutes. So it added about five minutes back to that timeline, but I can see the ice cubes starting to form. When I was testing this ice maker the other day, after the first batch of ice, the second and third batches take about half the amount of time. That's because the way the ice maker's positioned, the water cools around those pipes. So the water itself is being cooled by those little metal rods. Another thing is this ice maker, each batch that you make, you have to pull off of those rods. I hope this kid doesn't hurt himself. So it's not like you're gonna store the ice in the container, but as you make the ice, you'll be able to put it in your cup or whatever. There's no real ice storage area unless you wanna put it in the freezer side. Maybe you put a little container in there and put your ice in there as you make it. This is the last minute. You can see the ice cubes forming right there. Now, that since the ice cubes are being made, this tray won't come out. When the ice cubes are finished, I'll defrost the rods. That'll release this basket. There it is. So this defrosting process started on its own and it takes about 30 seconds. And I can almost see some bubbles coming out around the edges here where that heat is happening. All right, so that defrost process should be done. So I should be able to ease. So you, you see that's like a bath of water and the ice cubes are right here. And I just tilt it like this so I don't get the water everywhere. There's also a scoop. Let me get the scoop real quick. The scoop came with the fridge and this scoop is designed to scrape, scrape the cube. So those are some pretty nice cubes. I mean, that's bigger than my thumb, one of those cubes. And there's, I think, 18 of them or so. I'll count them in a minute here. Also, for reference, this cup is about six ounces, I believe. Six to eight ounces. So let me fill it with cubes. There's a little hole right here in the tray, so I can just pour... Wow, so those cubes more or less filled this cup, this little eight ounce cup. But now I can just put that back in, seat it, and start another round of ice. And this time it says it'll take about 12 minutes for that ice to form. But now I got this perfect ice and I'm gonna enjoy another cold cup of water. You know, I didn't really think I would ever want ice. I've always had a mini fridge that I've carried in my minivan camper. On a day like today, it's not super hot. I think the high was like 82, so it's probably around 80 degrees right now. This still feels pretty good to have some cold ice. I am making another batch of ice right now, but I wanted to show you this battery chamber at least while this is happening. So inside is this battery and I don't want to release the battery because I am making ice, but this battery almost reminds me of like an electric bicycle battery or a little scooter battery. So it's a, a box about this big and it's like 297, so close to 300 watt hours. Last night I was showing this to somebody in my van and I showed him, hey, this fridge would run without the other battery. So I turned off the outlet for the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. And then I forgot to turn it back on. So this morning when I went to check it, I was like, oh no, this battery has been running the fridge all night. I forgot to turn the EcoFlow back on because I prefer to use the EcoFlow and have this more as like a reserve battery. But this thing still had three bars left in the morning when I woke up. So it went from four to three in about a 10 hour period. Now granted, it was actually colder last night. It was probably 50 degrees. So it's, it's not like the fridge had to work as hard to keep up with the temperature. 
Today, tonight, it's gonna be warmer, so it'll probably have to work a little harder to keep the temperature cooler. And regular USBs are going away, and they're becoming more obsolete as everything's transitioning over to USB-C. So this battery has a USB-C. I've had some fridges that have a single USB on the display, and I've always wondered why is that there? I mean, I'm sure you would use it if you really needed it, but the way they're usually positioned is they're kind of in a place that it's hard to reach. So for me, this USB-C is in a hard to reach spot. So I'm not gonna use it really, I probably won't ever use it because I'm gonna keep this closed up and I'll use the main power station for charging any small devices like phones and my laptop. So I'm not sure how this thing is being packaged either. I've got the fridge, I have the wheels and handle, and I have this battery and these things all came in separate packages. So I don't know if it's gonna be one package for all of it, is that how it's gonna be priced? Or is it gonna be the fridge and then you get those accessories as you want them or can afford them, maybe you add those to the cost later. I feel like it could be kind of expensive, but for what you get, you get ice, you get cold water, you get a freezer fridge, you also get the ability to unplug from your power station and move this thing around. Another interesting feature is to drain the ice maker when you're not using it. They have this little hose behind this door that you just disconnect this hose. And I don't wanna to let too much water out, but you drain it like that. And every time you're not gonna use this for more than a day or two, I would just drain it and leave it disconnected and leave this door open so that it drains and it dries out. This is also an antimicrobial material. It feels like a silicone to me, but I wouldn't want mold to build up in here. So make sure you clean that out. And if you really get to a situation where you've had this thing in here and it's starting to get a little swampy, run some vinegar through it and that should clean it up no problem. So two cups of water and I've got about half of that ice left and that water is ice cold. I think it's kind of spoiling me. I'm not used to having ice cold water outside like this. So I do always get asked questions like, how did I get this? Where did this come from? EcoFlow and other companies do send me these products for testing. I usually keep them for six months to a year and then when I'm done with them, I give them away to folks that I meet on the road. I do like to do the interviews where I do kind of a tour of people's vans. And so a lot of times if I do those interviews, in return, I'll give a power station or something to those folks. It's just something that I'm passionate about. I really like to see how the, the power station and the refrigerators and the solar panels have improved since I started this about four years ago. It's just something that I like to do. So that's what I do with these things. I don't have any personal attachment to any of these companies, but I'm just more passionate about trying new things out, testing them. So it just finished defrosting the tray here and I should just be able to pop this up nice and easy. And I didn't give you a good look at this ice a minute ago, but. So there were 18 cubes in here, so not bad. You get 18 cubes. I feel like for a big glass, one batch of cubes is perfect for one person. So if you are doing this, Plan to make a few batches of cubes as you're going along. The only gripe I have, and hey, it's perfect, I love having these ice cubes, is to make the next batch, I either have to put this in a cup or find a different place to store these. If I put this back in the water, probably within five to 10 minutes, these cubes will melt because the rest of the water is not frozen. But one thing I can say with certainty is this ice maker is not a gimmick. It works, it does make ice. This is running off of just the internal battery and the small EcoFlow River 2 Pro. This thing's been running for about six days in my minivan nonstop between these two power sources and that solar panel. I'm gonna get this thing stored back in my van because there's no reason for me to leave this out. There might be raccoons out or something and they might try to come claw on it tonight. This fridge came with two removable wheels. They did come in a separate box, so I'm not sure if they come with the fridge or if that's an accessory that you would get after the fact. And the reason I have one of the wheels off right now is it just happens to fit perfectly in my minivan with just that one wheel off. So this wheel I'll leave in there. I'll put some video of me installing these on the screen just so you can see how easy it is. Assembling the handle and wheels on this portable fridge is a breeze. It took me around 10 minutes to complete and I'll show you all of the steps. Let me know if you have any questions about this process in the comments. 
To mount the wheels, you just need to use the wing nuts that came with the fridge. And don't lose the screws like I almost did. You can easily install and remove the wheels when not needed. For the rest of the install, I used a Phillips head screwdriver and the instructions included in the package were easy to follow. The rail covers need to be removed to install the carrying handle. The rail cover mounting brackets need to be removed as well. Once you remove them, you need to open your screw pack and get the included hardware ready. Three of the screws hold each side of the cover to the fridge while the handle is secured by a steel bracket using two screws. When you're tightening the screws, make sure not to overdo it. Turning the fridge on its side will make this next step easier to access the two screws that secure the steel mounting bracket. Be careful not to drop the screws into the hole or you'll need to remove this cover to access those screws. After checking all of the screws, remove the adhesive protector from the rails. Next, align the rail cover and push it in place. Once you've completed installing the hardware and wheels, you're ready to hit the road. It's that easy. And inside of the box, you'll find two charging cables, the car charger and the AC power block. Both chargers connect through the XT input positioned on the side of the fridge. Another downside to lugging this around with the wheels is it made a huge mess in here because I was messing with this thing in the mud the other day. But I don't really plan to move this out of the van that often, so I don't think it's a big deal. We got this ice bouncing around in here. Oh. I could not have asked for a better fit either because the fridge I had in here before was a 60 quart. I think this one's around 40. That 60 quart fridge took up two thirds of this gap right here. So since that fridge is gone and I have this fridge now, I have a lot more space for actual storage of things that I'll use. I've developed a few thoughts on the ice maker now that I've had plenty of time to use it. There are two configurations that you can set up the mini fridge to use the ice maker. And the first one is if you're off grid or using it in the way that I used it, you have to use a power station and the internal battery to get the ice maker to work. Or you can use the AC adapter that came with the mini fridge. Both of those methods work perfectly. However, I prefer to use the 12 volt DC outlet along with that additional battery. If you're not gonna get the accessory battery, then you won't have that option. And using the AC power isn't that big of a deal, but it is a little less efficient than if you were able to use the DC power. So when you actually use the ice maker for the first time out camping, make sure to top it off for that first use. That way the water sensor can register that it's full and it'll start making ice whenever you're ready. That first batch of ice will take a little longer, but any subsequent batches of ice shouldn't take as long because as the process of making ice cools the water in the chamber, it brings that water's temperature down to closer to what it needs to make ice. And so what I mean by that is, the first time I made ice, the water was ambient temperature, but then the second time I made ice, it had already cooled that water down almost to ice cold water. So as it started making ice more and more, each batch of ice took less and less time until it settled to around that 12 o'clock mark that EcoFlow claims it will take to make ice. I also wanted to talk a little about power consumption. The EcoFlow Glacier is the first fridge that I've ever tested that is Energy Star certified. And it is rated through Energy Star to consume about 142 kilowatt hours per year if plugged in continuously to a home wall outlet. And that breaks down to just about 400 watts per day, which is a very low consumption compared to some of the other fridges that I've tested. While the compressor is running, it does pull about 100 watts, but it doesn't run for very long. So it might run for two or three minutes at a time just to maintain that steady state temperature. It also has an eco setting and a regular setting. The eco setting allows the temperature to range slightly more than it would on the normal setting. So if you have the fridge set at something like 36 degrees on eco mode, it might get up to 38 or 39 degrees before it cools itself back down. While in regular mode, it'll fluctuate a little less. I appreciate you watching my video. Check the comments and I'll make any updates if I have any problems with the fridge in the future. But currently, I'm pretty happy with it. If you wanna know what the current price is, check the link in the video description. And if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on my next adventure.